Hey there everybody, this is Kian from the Ghostbusters of Scotland and today I will be showing you the Ghostbusters Employee Welcome Kit which arrived yesterday but is not officially released uh, for another five days I think um, today being the 20th of October uh, it's not officially released until the 25th of October here in the UK uh, I don't know when it's released in the US but I got mine from a website called gamerchic.co.uk uh, where it's currently going for £35, but they do have an introductory offer where uh, they knock a little bit off your first order. So I managed to get mine for about £33, maybe £32. I pre-ordered it back in July, so uh, I can't remember exactly how much I paid for it. But it wasn't too bad, especially considering what's actually in this. So if we open this sucker up... First thing you notice is the Certificate of Anti-Paranormal Proficiency, um, which they have done a certificate like this before. Um, here's one I printed off earlier. So as you can see, it, there's some obvious differences, but there are a couple of similarities, most notably in the signature for Dr. Ray Stance right down to the little awkward squiggle at the tail end of the Z. Uh, also, but the text on the new one is a lot less dense than it was on the original. And it's on a nice nice piece of thick card. You know, it's, it's quite nice. So that's that. Next up we have a little metal Oh yeah, I forget it's got like a sticky back on the on the back of it. A little metal plaque just says employee welcome kit. The one criticism I have about a lot of the items in this in this kit is right down at the bottom here you get all the the legal all the legal gubs, you know, Ghostbusters trademark and copyright 2019 Columbia Pictures Industries incorporate so yeah there's a lot of a lot of that on pretty much every item if we go back to the certificates at the bottom there uh, next up just to get it out of the way is a little jar which is for your slime now I've already added slime to mine but it does not come with slime it it's an empty jar it's got a plastic lid plastic jar but what makes this actually quite fun is the description on the back or the side rather you got a little biohazard sign there uh, uh, if been exposed wash off with soap and water it's got a little thing there to tick what color slime it is and then the warnings uh, positive charge may cause extreme cheerfulness uh, repeated declarations of love and friendship, dry mouth and constipation. Uh, do not excite. Just get it in focus. Do not excite psychomagnetic slime with negative emotions. Uh, do not dump down the drain. Do not swallow. And then again, you get the legal gubs. But it's a nice little, nice little jar. Nice embossed Ghostbusters logo on it. In fact, embossed text as well. But it contains a nice little amount of slime. Nice, nice uh, display on your shelf. So there's that. Now I will get to the book soon enough because I really want to talk in depth about this book because this, to me, is the best part of the whole box set. So I'll get to that soon. But next up, little Ghostbusters ballpoint pen. Enough said. In fact, before I do that, it says Ghostbusters on one side. It's got all the legal gubs on the other. So there's that. I'll get to the map in a second. First, I want to talk about. Uh, first, I want to talk about the patches. Now, the no ghost logo. I have seen it a lot worse. The stitching on it is really nice. But there is some webbing going on with the fingers. 
and on the top of the head I put my hand in the way you can see what I'm talking about it's not exactly flush with the design but it's a very nice stitch pattern I have seen a lot worse available both online and at conventions you know vendors selling patches and stuff the rookie patch <clears throat> It's not just a printed one, it's actually embossed. It's a proper stone patch. So I really like that. That's that's really cool. Uh, next up, uh, we get basically a load of paper. So first off, a little bit of card with the uh, Ghost, Ghostbusters business card. Dr. Egon Spengler, Dr. Peter Venkman, Dr. Ray Stance, Winston Zedmore. It's kind of ignoring that Winston Zedmore has an honorary doctorate. I don't know, maybe he's not allowed to say that he's a doctor. Maybe they're just not going with that because it's not considered canon anymore. Uh, there's the address, professional paranormal investigations and eliminations, the phone number, and then they spoil it with the legal gubs on the bottom, on the side there. That's a, that's a running theme, unfortunately. Next up, we have a vinyl sticker which I'm not going to stick on anything. I'll probably just keep it in this box. Uh, property protected by Ghostbusters. Then all the legal gubs again. And we have an invoice, which is actually quite nice. A nice idea showing off service description. So you can, you can write up whatever you want. You know, entrapment costs 4,000. Uh, proton charging and storage of the beast costs 1,000. Then add another five hundred dollars for the Zedmore factor. But it also has a yellow copy underneath. So when you write on the when you write on the white copy, it transfers onto the yellow one. So you have it in duplicate. That's a nice idea. But again, right at the very bottom, all the legal stuff, which they could have just written on the back, same as all the other pieces. Except for maybe the vinyl sticker, because, you know, it's a vinyl sticker. And then, this here, I think this is the most lackluster part of the set. It's just a flyer. You know, Ghostbusters, strange noises in the middle of the night, feelings of dread in your basement or attic. Ever seen a spook, specter, or ghost? If the answer is yes, call the professionals. Ghostbusters, we're ready to believe you. 24 hours a day for all your paranormal intervention needs. Ghostbusters, trademark at Columbia... Pictures, Industries, Incorporated, all rights reserved. Yeah, they, it does kind of take away from a lot of the, a lot of the, I don't know, play factor, the fantasy of these parts. If, if only they printed it on the back. Next up, uh, we have the Ghostbusters Ecto-1 Roots and Accessibility Service Map New York City. We operate 24 hours a day so you open up the first flap and you have like a checklist of all the parts and equipment and everything that you need to check and load into the Ecto-1 so make sure the fuel tanks full load it up with all the gear make sure the car is actually running and all the equipment in in and on the car is running and then all your personal items and forms and sampling equipment that's, that's quite nice. And then open the flap up again. You have this little mini poster. Welcome to the team. Who are you going to call 24 hours a day for all your paranormal intervention needs? And then finally, if you open it up completely, you have this map of Manhattan. Complete with landmarks from the movies. Now, the absolute nerd in me is going to nitpick some small details here most notably the location of the Manhattan Museum of Art see on this map they have it way over here on Central Park East which is where the Museum of Natural History is in real life so I understand why they put it there but in real life the Manhattan Museum of Art was filmed way down here at Customs House or the Museum of the American Indian 
which is right near Battery Park. And I know this because I've been there. Went past it on a tour bus. Uh, ended up at Battery Park. Got a really nice view of the Statue of Liberty from there. But everything else is in its correct place as far as I'm aware. Um, including places that don't really exist, like the Cedric Hotel. I'm just assuming it's over there. But other places, you know, we've got the firehouse, we've got the courtroom, we've got Razor Cult Books, the Washington Square Monument. Uh, what else have we got? We've got Spook Central, St. Paul the Apostles Church up there, which is where uh, Ray and Egon collected the slime in the montage of Ghostbusters 2. And then you got little nods here and there to where certain ghosts were spotted, like the jogger ghost was up here in Central Park next to the pond. <laughs> You know, you've got the mink coat incident, the subway ghost, the slimer in the hot dog cart, the zombie taxi driver. Uh, way down here at Pier 34, we've got the ghost Titanic arrival. All this stuff. And nice little descriptions of each, of each building. And there's like little clouds of different colours around each landmark. And down here we have a, a guide as to what they actually mean. And the pink line is supposedly the River of Slime. But I'm not entirely convinced that it was quite that long. You know, especially considering it was through the pneumatic transit system, which, uh, if Google is correct, was about mm, 100 meters long. But anyway, I actually quite like this. It's a nice little, a nice little thing to add. You probably good idea might be to frame it put it on display at a table at a convention or something but move the box out of the way because we're done with that as well we are now on to the meat of the whole box set the Ghostbusters equipment manual and protocols now this is honestly this alone I think is worth the price of the whole box set because at first, I was I was genuinely worried that this was going to be just a blank notebook with the occasional diagram of a PK meter or a ghost trap, but I could not have been more wrong, and I am so glad that I was wrong, because this thing is densely packed with so many technical descriptions of all of the equipment. Well, not not all of the equipment. You know, they don't talk about, like, the KUD meter or the, what the belt gizmo does. Would have, been, would have been interesting to see what the belt gizmo does, but eh, it's beyond it's a moot point, to be perfectly honest. One thing that they don't talk about too much is the Ectomobile. And that's because there already is a book dedicated to the Ectomobile. You know, if you don't already have the Ectomobile Owner's Workshop Manual, then that's that's where you go for all your information about about the Ecto-1. But just go. F I'll just go through this book briefly with you, uh, just summarise each part. So basically, this book is acting as if you have just been employed by Ghostbusters. That's basically what this kit is all about uh, and you're on like a probationary period of three months as a rookie so that's why that's why you get the rookie patch and the certificate and all that stuff uh, if you want to learn more about the supernatural and do do your research go to Razor Cult Books on 33 St. Mark's Place New York City uh, but then we go into not just the technical details of all the equipment but the general procedures of how to handle calls and they have three different three different categories of calls there's category one uh, sorry code one 
which is non-life-threatening or non-disturbance calls. Basically, uh, public appearances or just scientific research. Code 2, which is a paranormal disturbance that uh, does not pose any sort of threat. So, for example, in Ghostbusters 2, the uh, jewelry store where the all the stuff's floating around that would be a call, that would be a code two, and then a code three is a paranormal incident that has an a, an immediate threat to life, so it's an emergency call. Uh, and they go into detail about all of those, how to handle each one, what constitutes a code two, a code one, a code two, a code three, how to sample different types of ectoplasm. How to make contact with the other side, uh, the classifications of all the different types of ectoplasm, not just not just green and not just green and pink, but you've got yellow, black, purple, white, which they go on to explain is actually what Stay Puft is made out of. Uh, then you've got the seven class system of ghosts. Now a lot of this is taken from the, uh, again, the Haynes uh, owner's workshop manual for the Ecto-1. There's a lot of information that's uh, used in this, but they've really elaborated on a lot of it. Uh, also, there's a lot of information taken from the IDW series, which, again, they've elaborated on. So first off, we've got the, the sniffer. And they, they not only... Do they just describe what it's for? But they actually point out what each part actually is. First of all, what it's called, and then with the instructions for use, they tell you what each part does. Now, I said that I was worried this was a notebook. There are pages here and there for, for notes, but they are specifically for certain items. And I probably, most definitely won't be writing in them. Next up, we have the PKE meter. Tells you what each display is for. Again, a little bit, a little note section. The Geiger meter, the ecto goggles, ah, the proton pack. <laughs> Not only does it tell you how to use it, but it also tells you how to wear it, how to put it on properly. and what each dial and switch does. Again, they did do this in the, the owner's workshop manual, but this one really takes it a step further. The owner's workshop manual, I believe, didn't mention what the, button, what the buttons and dials on the front of the ghost trap did. And here, it tells you exactly what they're called and what they all do. And one thing that always bugged me in the movie, Ray says what the first two buttons here do, but the, the third button there was never touched. And here we find out that it's a, a unit reset button. And that basically, if you mess up the whole process of dumping a ghost trap inside, if maybe you don't lock the system correctly or you press the buttons out of order. You can press that one to reset the whole process. And then finally we have the slime blower or the psychomagnetheric slime charger. I love the diagrams as well. <laughs> Just the, the model that they used with the uh, 80s style glasses and mustache combo. And then finally we have uh, a list of acronyms and told what they actually stand for. Some of them very basic, such as max means maximum, HQ means headquarters. And then you get things like NRADS, net radiation absorption rate, absorption rate, or OOPA, observe, orientate, plan, act. And then finally at the back of the book, we have some acknowledgements and dedications. 
and the dedications are to the likes of Harold Ramis, Michael C. Gross, and so on, and everybody who has passed away, unfortunately. Uh, and the acknowledgements are to a lot of the fans, uh, but there are some specific people who are mentioned. And I'll just let you have a little read of that. So you can pause the video here if you want. One thing that is totally missing from this book, however, is the author's name. And that's a shame because I would really love to just thank the person who wrote this book because it is so cool. I honestly believe if Ghostbusters was a real business, if you had this book, the Ectomobile Workshop Manual, and Tobin's Spirit Guide, you had all three of these books, you would know everything there is to know about being a Ghostbuster. So, honestly, I'm really chuffed with this, this box set. There are some items that are a bit lackluster. The um, copyright logos and everything kind of get in the way of the fantasy element, I guess. But it's not that huge an issue. So, anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.